Should we start off by looking at the uh, your background here? So we've got cancer vaccines and lessons learned. What, 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 should, what should we say about this, Gus? Well, I, I just dismissed this very quickly, just to yeah. say that I've been involved with dozens of uh, cancer mm. vaccines, and we've learned very ma- major lessons which are relevant to designing HIV and COVID vaccine. This is the whole point of this. Mm. Mm. And uh, that of all these uh, ones we've done, the, the most important is that if you go target a single cancer cancer antigen which is yep. the, is the vogue that yep. the cancer will down regulate that and the vaccine won't work within yeah. three months it won't work yeah. and it's where we found in retrospect the only ones that work with the non-specific mycobacteria uh, vacai and obiensi mm. which came out of a program to improve bcg for tuberculosis and their their wonderful commonality is they're both heat killed and mm. i think mm. that is part of that technique Mm. they are i mean they're dead bugs heat killed and so they're they're stimulating the innate immune system there's no one specific antigen they're boosting and to me i think that is the secret of a good cancer vaccine you don't try and target the tumor antigen which everyone's been trying to do for 30 years so that so i raised this because If you've got an airborne disease and you don't know what it is, or you know, say it's flu, it almost certainly takes hold because your innate immune system has fallen off. And uh, one of the slides that I didn't have, but I have in my collection, is your innate immune system is never higher than when you're a child and a young adolescent, but it starts to fall off at 55 and goes down to your boots by the time you're 70. And as it uh, gradually declines, this is when you're much more likely to get flus and all the other infections, as well as the cancer incidence rises. So having a policy to try to stop this decline from 55 onwards, to me, would be one of the greatest uh, ways of, of challenging the cancer because it correlates. And of course, that doesn't mean causation, but certainly the more research we do, the more the correlation looks like it is it is causal. And I believe if I was uh, in charge of the medical service, I would make sure everybody from about 50 had measures to boost their innate immune response, then I haven't, wouldn't have to waste billions on useless flu vaccines and all the other new ones they bring in and COVID vaccines. And certainly, as I've mentioned before, I think it's such an important observation because it was made to me, I didn't uh, go looking for it, was everybody who had been on the agents to boost their innate immune system for cancer their um, partners all said, I don't know what it does for cancer, but it's fantastic for flu and colds. The guy's never has gone through uh, the whole winter without ever being ill. He's never, ever yeah. done that before. And that's when my ears pricked up. That's all you needed. And I, I think I mentioned before, I offered this to uh, uh, Witty and others who said it needed more work in mice. Uh, you know, a drug which has been given to thousands of people yeah. in its work up for TB. Yep. So what the pharmaceutical industry is trying to do is target one really specific molecule, one specific Mm. antigen, make some clever clogs vaccine against that. Mm. Whereas really, nature has provided all you need. This mycobacterium vacai or uh, obensis, if you give these in a particular attenuated form, they're going to boost all of the innate system, system, upgrade your T cells, protect against potentially all infections and potentially all cancers and yet for some reason having used these for humans uh, you've having you use these in humans for decades all of a sudden now we need research in mice it really is quite bizarre that this is this is happening it, it, it's inane as well as bizarre i mean yeah. it just defies belief yeah and you, 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 you've actually tried to go to the regulatory authorities have, so that doctors we, could we, use this as a compassionate have. prescribing. Yeah, it, we, we have. And I, it, can you imagine that they, they always trot out, you know, long term safety concerns? Well, they certainly didn't give a damn about the COVID yeah. vaccine rollout, about any yeah. long term safety concerns yeah. whatsoever. It's hard to see why you were just giving a few dead bugs into a muscle. Uh, that causes such a massive polyclonal immune response would have any adverse events decades or years later. It's kind of, it, it, I must say, it's hard it, to see that. Part, yeah, in the muscle it might be, but it, it's intradermal. That's oh, it's intradermal. So, so right. important because oh, it, right, it, right. it's picked up. 
by the uh, the cells within the skin, mm. your Langen cells, etc., and right. it gets taken to the lymph node where it induces a real fine reprogramming of the right. immune response. Right. If you give it intramuscularly, nothing much will happen. So right, okay, it's interesting to the intradermal. Right. And, of course, that was where BCG was given. So it, mm. It, mm. that's where the insight came from. Yeah. You have told me that before, so I should have remembered, <laughs> should have remembered that, yeah. It's just that I've never given intradermal injections. Uh, I've uh, given lots of other sorts, but... Uh, mm. And um, I learned how to do it once, but never actually given them. <laughs> yep. So the the lessons that learned from this, all of the antigen specific vaccines have failed. That's what the point we've just made, really, yes. isn't it? Mm -hmm. So we need this polyclonal response to upgrade everything. And I just love this idea that the same immune system that's going to protect me against bacterial and viral infections is also going to protect me against cancers. It's just mm. it's just too good to be true, but mm. it is true. Mm. Yeah. But nobody's going to do a study for that under the current environment. That is mm. the tragedy. Yeah. Uh, because the, 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 one of the things I did learn while I was out there was I'm not the only person who feels that the, the reason that this whole COVID pandemic has been such a disaster is that it's really run and manipulated by the big pharmaceutical companies yeah. who control the, the, not only the governments, but they did it through the super governmental organizations yeah. such as the United Nations and the World Health uh, organization, uh, both of which I think are long since passed their cell de mm. date and neither are fit for purpose. And it was a tragedy that the, uh, the governments uh, said they would do what they were told. And now the WHO, of course, wants the governments to sign up so they will be in charge next time they release the virus. And they will be able to tell you, you must buy all these vaccines of us, even though we haven't yep. tested them and we don't know whether they work and uh, you're going to pretend they're not uh, dangerous. I mean, <laughs> this is what it taught me about this. I mean, yeah. why would anybody fall for this i mean the only people who, who uh, came anywhere near to this was angus tegnell and the swedish fellow mm. who said he wasn't going to have this lockdown nonsense mm. because that again was dictated from the who china what have you and anybody you know, with half a brain who has thought it through and those in the great barrington declaration and angus basically saw it for what it was that it would cause far more trouble than it's worth and even the hallett inquiry did say why did nobody do a cost-benefit analysis on the lockdown? And I mean, it, it, it was obvious. Why would you do something that ended up costing us a trillion pounds? Mm. I estimate that's the cost, a trillion pounds of our economy. Uh, it, actually, probably more, because the damage done to generations of people at school, university and their jobs and mental health and non-productivity is probably going to make that a small, small beer 10, 20 years down the line. In, incalculable, yeah. But the, the, the comments I get that are just so, so outraged, really, is that you have this simple preparation that you and your co-workers have generated. Mm. Um, I want to have it, mm. but you're not allowed to give it to me. Mm. It's just outrageous. Mm. I, I want your intradermal... Mm -hmm. mycobacterium to upgrade all of my immune system because i'm too old mm -hmm. I, want my, I want my immune system upgraded mm -hmm. to reduce my chances of cancer to reduce my chances of all infections mm -hmm. and my government does not allow me to have it this is just mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's hard to get over that but uh and, and many many people watching the videos feel the same so yeah yeah and yeah. it's the same same government and authorities that won't allow you to have this, which the company would be very, very uh, grateful to be able to uh, make available. Mm. But it's the same government that basically wouldn't allow you to have, you know, sens sensible uh, precautions for when you got uh, upper respiratory symptoms. It might mm. be COVID. The same governments, and this, and I say governments, this is around the world. Yeah. I mean, this, this is what makes it so sinister. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. was exactly the same that yeah. I found in my colleagues from uh, mm. the United United States and Canada, mm. then Australia and New Zealand. It's all the same. We now yeah. know ivermectin would have cured COVID in, in very ill people. Yeah. It's been uh, 
the number of studies which are positive, yet Fauci went on and lied and said it was toxic and dangerous horse only. And I think that probably led to hundreds of thousands of deaths mm. because everybody I've talked to who used it, nobody has had a death from it. Mm. And I myself used it on two patients who were really, really ill after they'd had everything else but didn't want to go to hospital, mm. uh, and they responded to it. So I, I know from personal experience it, it works. So the same government wouldn't let you have that, that won't let you have this. So why won't they let you have things that we know are very simple, safe and effective? I mean, ivermectin is unbelievably uh, low toxicity. It's one of Indeed. the world's safest drugs, isn't it, really? It's I mean, probably, safe, yeah. safer than ibuprofen or paracetamol or oh, um, far, acetaminophen. Or, yeah. Far, far safer. Yeah. I mean, it's given to millions of people around yeah. the world and saves the lives, it's not, not only lives, but the eyesight. It's, mm. it's said to uh, save two million people a year from going blind mm. from the filaria. Yeah. 